Are distractions and disorganization taking a toll on your life? Have you been diagnosed with ADHD? Or are you just ADHD curious? Today, we're going to debunk ADHD myths, explore the emotional impact of living with this cognitive difference, and share strategies to help navigate your emotions and life with ADHD. But first, this is the FitMass where together we learn to develop habits that help us live beyond our mental health struggles to create happier, healthier lives. He's Zach. He lives in the future with his anxiety. He's Jeremy, and he lives in the past with his depression. And we get together once a week in the present to share the obstacles we face and how we overcome them. Coming up in just a few minutes, we do have an expert to actually break down a lot of these myths and things you need to know about uh, living with ADHD. But Zach, you're a bit of an expert yourself because this is something you live with. Yeah. W wait, what are we talking about? Sorry. <laughs> I got distracted. That's yes. weird. I know it is very weird. Yeah, no, I do have a touch of this. I overcompensate with intelligence and I'm able to get things done and functionally navigate the world like I do with my anxiety, which would be crippling for most other people. So it's it's been an interesting journey, but I don't know if anyone has ever seen it, but there's videos that I've seen on Instagram where like somebody will go, okay, I'm going to unload the dishwasher. And they go to unload the dishwasher and they see that there's like a loose screw on the handle of the dishwasher. So they go to get a screwdriver to fix the dishwasher. And then while they're out there, they see that like something's dripping out of the car and then they go and look under the car and like so on and so on and so on to the point where they've got the car up on a lift, the motor's out and like they're like rebuilding the car mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. from emptying the dishwasher. Right, right. It's not far from the truth. There have been days where I set out to do one task and partially do 13 other tasks and then go, wait, what, what was I doing today? <laughs> like it just, it's just how my brain rolls and you're like, oh, I got to do this thing. Oh, well, I got to fix that. Oh, I got to fix that. And that's actually why I'm good in IT world because that's actually one of the skills you need, right? Because you go to fix something and you're like, oh, I can't fix that without fixing the other thing. And then you go to fix that and you're like, oh, I can't fix that without fixing the other thing. And it goes up the chain and up the chain. And then you have to come back down the chain. So it's, it, it's an interesting life. If it were an Amazon product, I would give it one star and I would not <laughs> recommend. I wouldn't buy again, but if right. you're going to buy it again, get it on subscribe and save. So you save a few bucks. Right, save a few bucks. You, you don't want to throw money away on this. The interview that we're about to share with you is, is really eye-opening for me personally, because I have a number of friends that battle the same sort of mental health issues that we've talked about here with anxiety and depression. And many of them that I relate to on more of the depressive side have since gone to doctors and, and been diagnosed with ADHD. And in the conversation we have, it's funny because you'll hear that, that our guest believes that I may have ADHD based on her experience and, and the people she's worked with. And mine is, uh, or my situation, whether or not I have it, I don't know, but it's, it's different from yours because where you physically follow those rabbit holes and go and do all of those things, mine works in a way where when I think about the dishwasher, loading or unloading, whatever it is, I sort of play it out in my head and how long it's going to take. And clearly it's going to take like 12 hours. And I've just got to clear my schedule for the day because that's the only thing I'm going to be able to do. And I just get paralyzed in it and it ends up not getting done. And my entire life I have approached it as, well, well, I'm just lazy. Like I, I'm not driven. I'm not motivated. I can't do anything. But there well, is all that's all of that's true. That is all but, true, I mean, of course. It's all but, true. but, uh, but no, there's, there's like this pause. There's this just like this block of you can't do this right now because it's so big. You can't mow the lawn because you've got to clear the weekend. This overwhelming inability to, to act takes over. And it's just like, I just physically can't move forward to do it. And I've always just chalked that up to, oh, well, I, I must be depressed. I'm like, I'm, I'm shutting down. Like that must be what's going on because that's sort of the mode that it replicates. is just that like, I just can't, I don't have the energy to do anything when really it's like, I don't have the energy to do that. So it's, it's different. And, and from what we're about to hear, those are sort of two different ways of living with this condition, which again, I am not diagnosed, but it, it is interesting that uh, I tend to have a lot of the traits that she sees in people yeah. that live with this. And I, I've got that too. I mean, that happens to me a lot too, where I will build something up so big in my head and it like just thinking through all the steps and then worrying about, well, what if I miss a step? What if I don't know how to do this part? What about this? What about that? Like all of that will lead me down the road of, of not acting. But those are the, those are actually the things, those projects where I just need to start. I know that like, once I start, I will be able to finish it. And then I'll get three hours into it and be like, Oh, I got a whole bunch done here. But if I let my brain go too much, it'll literally be like, okay, 
I need to know every single step from step A to step Z in order to accomplish this. And if I don't know them all, then I can't start. And sometimes you just got to go start the lawnmower, Mm -hmm. start going. I mean, in my case, I just hire someone to do it. Yeah, well, there's that. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier. (laughs) The mowing the lawn. I just look out the, I just look out the window while I'm drinking a nice cold iced tea or something like that. Yeah. That's a good plan. That's a good plan. If you're tired of dealing with those pesky post-workout aches and pains, we've got something you need to check out right now. It's the new Recover Ice Bath. It's the ultimate game changer for your recovery routine. And guess what? It's surprisingly affordable and we're going to throw in free shipping anywhere in the world. That's not something we can offer forever, so you got to act fast to get your hands on this incredible ice bath. So don't let muscle soreness slow you down. Go to our website, click on the link in the show notes for this episode, and experience the power of the new Recover Ice Bath for yourself. All right, well, that's enough of our armchair expertise. Let's talk to somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. Our guest is Dr. Tamara Rozier. She is the founder of the ADHD Center of West Michigan, and we started by asking her about some of the common misconceptions about ADHD. I am so glad you asked this because there are so many myths surrounding ADHD. One of them, by the way, is you can't be smart and have ADHD. So it's only a dumb boy disease. It used to be when we thought about ADHD, we used to think about that naughty third grade boy who kept falling out of his seat. And although he may have had ADHD, there's a lot of others of us have ADHD. So that's a common misconception. Another one is that ADHD, you grow out of ADHD. So a lot of people go, you know, I had ADHD as a kid, but I grew out of it. No, you just found better ways to accommodate. And some are healthy, some aren't healthy. Um, Another one is women tend not to have ADHD. And if you had followed me around this morning, you'd know that that's simply not true. Mm -hmm. So ADHD is a cognitive difference. It's a neurological difference, which means those of us with ADHD, our brains actually work differently. That prefrontal cortex, that part of your brain that is really good at telling you just to do it, doesn't work as well for us. And so we're like method actors going around, what's my motivation? What's my motivation? And that's one of the hallmarks of ADHD. We are difficult to get started on task. We tend to motivate ourselves emotionally and not a lot of people know that. This might be really 101 level, but how does someone have ADHD? Is it, are you purely born with it? Is there something environmentally that's happening? How does, how does one get it? Love this question because it, it was hotly debated But really, the science is starting to settle on, yeah, you can thank your parents for this one, Um, especially dads. And great. So, yep. And so (laughs) um, the, the odds are higher than this, but just to play it safe, I always say if you have a parent with ADHD, the odds of you having a child with ADHD is higher than 50%. Mm. In fact, some research says it's 0.8, 80%. Wow. Yeah. So actually my next book is is about families. So this runs in families. What are, how are we going to create emotionally healthy families who have ADHD? All right. Well, I'm going to say thanks mom, because my mom had ADHD. My dad didn't really have so much of it, but yeah, no, that uh, just, as you're describing ADHD, that's, I think that's me. I think Jeremy could even attest to it. He could probably even make a diagnosis on me. I think so. And, and I've, I've wondered myself because I have friends that battle similar mental health issues. They met battle depression, anxiety, and all these things. And, and they, they feel like they've made a great discovery when one day they walk into a doctor's office and the doctor says, turns out you have ADHD. And they're like, oh, and they suddenly there's all these resources and things that are available to them to make their brains work better and their life becomes a little simpler. Uh, I've, I've done a bunch of online tests just because of that, that connection with friends that have had that experience. I thought, what yeah. am I? And it's always kind of either like way off, like no, or maybe kind of. So yeah. how, how do I know if maybe, maybe I just kind of have a hard time of things because I'm, you know, disorganized or, yeah. or whatever, but how do I know if I, if I have it? Well, first of all, online tests are hard because the DSM, you know, the book that people use as a diagnostic tool is 20 years behind. Mm-hmm. So we're dealing with a tool that is way, way old for us especially for adults. And so a lot of times the DSM will completely miss adults. The DSM was actually kind of formed on children. 
And back then it was believed that you would grow out of ADHD, mm -hmm. that silly nonsense that you had going on in your brain. So um, that could be happening. The other thing is uh, the smarter you are, the better coping skills you have. And so the more you can kind of sneak your way out of certain pickles. I've actually had someone say to me, well, I doubt you have ADHD. How could you publish a book if you have ADHD? I'm like, challenge accepted. Follow <laughs> me around. How many times do I play on my watch? Like, ding, ding, ding. There's your phone. I, I, come on. My short-term memory, by the way, that's another uh, problem for those of us with ADHD. We have horrible short-term memory. In other words, we can't quite catch it and hold it. And that's a hallmark of ADHD. So it's not just, I mean, you know how you're like, oh crap, I thought I was listening. Mm -hmm. What did you just say? It's, it's um, our brains kind of get stuck between two parts of <laughs> the prefrontal <laughs> cortex, the DMN yeah. kind of is like a teeter totter. One should be up, one should be down. Our teeter totter gets stuck and it, it's like that spinning wheel on your computer. It just keeps spinning. Right. That's, yeah. a, that's an ADHD hallmark. So, so I, I was going to ask you a question, but then I forgot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. <laughs> no, I, I wanted to, I wanted to really like, you know, in, in today's day and age, right. We've got smartphones, we've got things that are dinging all over the place and distracting us and, and creating the appearance of, of ADHD yeah. in, in a lot of cases. So I'm curious on like what your take is on, you know, all of this technology and people who think they might have it, but they don't, they're just distracted by technology. And is, is it actually causing people to like develop ADHD, like in their brains? Uh, you know, here's where I draw a parallel. You know how there's really narcissists? There's a real narcissist who feed their ego off of people. And then there's people who are so egocentric that they are full of themselves. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the per person who's full of themselves isn't really a narcissist. They have narcissistic behaviors. The yeah. same with ADHD. Like, seriously, I go down a rabbit hole so easily. Like, just... Um, and I'm sure you guys do this, um, ADHD folks. Well, I'm sorry. I don't know that you're diagnosed, but, uh, ADHD people have divergent thinking patterns and we're always like, well, what about this? I don't know about this. And, and we love asking the, what if, how are these connected? So the technology kind of gives people like, like, oh, we can find out what the Wall Street Journal is saying. We can do this. We can do this. And it's so much information coming in. Well, that's what it does feel like to have ADHD, except the true difference is I don't need technology to have that feeling. Mm -hmm. I can just be all by my lonesome without any technology and have all the pinging happen in my brain. Yeah. So it's whether it's happening internally or externally, uh, ADHD brains, it's like... <laughs> A lot of my clients say, it's like, I have a thousand conversations going on in my head, mm. not audible because that's a different diagnosis, mm -hmm. but just kind of pinging, like, what about this, 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 this? Yeah. So it's noisy in here. That's mm -hmm. what my clients say. So cognitively aside, I mean, that's got to take a toll emotionally. So talk to me about like the emotional aspect of dealing with this. Well, when you can't fully rely on the prefrontal cortex, we go, uh, those of us with ADHD, go to a different part of the brain called the limbic center. And nestled in deep inside the limbic center is this little almond-sized part of our brain called the amygdala, which is supposed to be on alert to keep us safe. The ADHD brain, the amygdala is always on high alert, and sometimes it's set too high. So I start to freak out if I have a big test. And I just start to whip myself up and just start to yell like a bear was chasing me. By the way, some of my clients, a bear could be chasing them and they've so tuned out of their amygdala. They're like, yeah, that happens every day. Oh. And there's hmm. times I'm in a session like, no, 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 no. Your amygdala needs to be chiming right now. So um, kind of a definition of ADHD is we get confused. What's a big deal? What's a small deal? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we literally... Um, have the same adrenaline rush from like a cognitive thing happening as we would 
a bear chasing us. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you're just talking about me. I know. I keep going. Yeah, is, have you met Zach? Because yeah, you're, yeah. you've, you've got him dialed <laughs> I, in. I, I'm watching the look on his face. I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. That was personal, <laughs> wasn't it? No, I, I like, as you were talking, I was like, I've always described my brain as the Tasmanian devil. And it's just, yep. you know, like leaving a path of destruction and, and utter grunting, yep. you know, in it, in its wake. And literally, I just forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> You know, yeah, in the uh, book, I ask people to have a metaphor of their ADHD for a reason, and you already have a metaphor of it. And so he's not a bad Tasmanian devil. We just need to kind of learn how to put him in the path of the right things. Yeah. I, my, the way I, the way I've, I've always managed it is, you know, it, it fires my anxiety. And when I finally realized that it was like ADHD anxiety instead of fighting against it, I decided to befriend it. And when it does fire, I yeah. thank it. I say, thank you for Perfect. keeping me safe, but you are not needed at the moment. And, and then I get distracted on 10 other things, but it usually calms down. So, so I really, I just, I wanted to ask you more about that. Like, that's how I did it, but you were, you just said like, you have to befriend it. You have to be friendly with it. Can you say yeah. more about that? Yeah. So with my clients, I ask them to work out a metaphor. My metaphor for my ADHD is every morning I get up and everyone has to run a race. I have to run a three-legged race. I have to tie my leg with my ADHD version of myself. So there's a part of me that just wants to take off and run. Oh no, I'm stuck with this dope who wants to sit down halfway and pick dandelions. And this is going to get a little dark, but when I was writing my dissertation, I metaphorically would punch her out mm. and drag her body. Mm -hmm. It's not healthy guys. And, and yeah. I, I had like, I had eye twitches. I had, you know, all these bad things happening to me because that's not a healthy way to do it. Now I had one person say, okay, but you're, you got it done. And yes, I did. But at what cost? And so really the only way is to befriend that so now every morning I wake up, I'm like, hey, chick, we're going to run that race again. And she's like, you know, I really don't want to. I'm like, how about we have some time where we pick dandelions together? Mm -hmm. She's like, I suppose. You know? Yeah, yeah. So ADHD people are motivated emotionally. We're motivated by fun and we're motivated by emotions. And Zach, what you just said is, hey, listen, anxiety, I used to drink that like an energy drink because it would fire me up and I'd do it. The problem with anxiety is that sometimes it turns into shame and then it turns into self-loathing. And so now instead of just that anxious voice, now you've got this, the meanest coach on earth just screaming at you, his face all red, spitting in your face. And you can't just simply thank him and wish him well. He's like, oh no, I'm here. And so now you have a bigger problem. So we we half joke all the time that Zach lives in the future with his anxiety. I live in the past with my depression. And we get together here once a week to in, in the present to you know share how we're getting through that. And a lot of what you said about that sort of waking up and, and that's like this other character in your life that you have to live with. Yeah. For me, that is very much depression. It is very much the thing that has kept me from like applying for jobs, for, from going after things for fear that when it comes time to perform, that guy wins and, you know, can't get out of bed, can't get motivated to move. And so I'm, I'm relating there. And like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm ADHD curious, right? Like, I don't know if I, if I have it, if I'm not, I'm, I'm t putting my toes so, in the water. Is that me? I no. don't know. But is I that, be, is that similar? Yeah, I want to be clear that I'm not diagnosing you. Sure. Right. I've also wa been watching your face. And by the way, I know my people. Oh, right? sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you put me anywhere, I'll find the ADHD people. Yeah. One word, just way more, more interesting. Um, sorry to the neurotypicals who are listening. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We know facts that people shouldn't even know, but like, <laughs> they're great. So, um, Jeremy, you just described something that some of my clients have, and I'm not talking about you directly, mm -hmm. but they call it depression, but really it's related to ADHD. Mm -hmm. And what it means is you're, you're so tired of the battle. Yes. 
everything takes so much effort. Yes. Where you'll think you'll use that divergent thinking to pop out and go, okay, this could end in one of seven ways and two of them I just don't want. Mm-hmm. And your ADHD might go, great idea. How about we don't? Yeah. I think there's a carnival somewhere. Let's go there. Yeah. The, the, uh, an analogy I use all the time is that I have one of the smallest lawns you've ever seen in your life. And the task of mowing the lawn in my head is going to take six hours. I need to clear my day. I need to you know, be ready to take a shower afterward. It's going to be a whole thing. But if I actually time it, it's like eight minutes, right? Like I can do it pretty quickly. But anything that, that seems difficult or challenging in any way, automatically 14 different stories of this is just going to be a huge monster, like just a monster to, to, to yeah. defeat. How in the world do you do it? Don't bother. You're not qualified. You're not good enough. Someone else will do it for you. You know who says, you know, people who say things like that, you know hmm. what they're called? What are they called? ADHD. Oh, okay. That, uh, <laughs> that adds up. Thanks for walking into that one. <laughs> yeah. um, so I, again, I'm not diagnosing you, but that it's exactly what my clients say. Wow. Um, I actually write about um, in my book, how the dishwasher seems to me like this is going to take all day. Yeah. I can't, I simply can't unload the dishwasher. Yeah. And I t- started timing myself two and a half minutes. Yeah. Yeah. My kitchen's just not that big guys. Right. No, it's crazy. Right. (laughs) You, you, you feel like a crazy person. Like I, I tell myself all the time when I, uh, there will be just little things and I'm like, Oh, I should pick that up. But it's just like, there's this block of like, I just, I cannot bring the energy to do it. That is it. So you guys, so Jeremy is what I would call, let's just pretend you could both have ADHD. Sure. Sure. Just yeah, let, let's pretend. Let's pretend let's that. Pretend. Yeah, that's quite a fantasy that we've conjured yep. up here. Um, so <laughs> Jeremy would be the energy miser kind. Mm-hmm. He, in other words, he's like, no, 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 this is too much energy. Shut it down right now. And Zach would be the energizer bunny. Like, that seems right. Go on, let's do this. I got it. And, and if not, he'll take this deep gulp of anxiety if he really has to reach deep. Even though he, you thank him for coming up, you know, he's standing there in the wings to rev you up if needed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it, that's what, I, you know, some people tell me, well, I have ADHD, but I don't have the hyperactivity. No, 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 no. Theoretically, you both do. It's just um, Jeremy's is all internal, yep. whipping around, and Zach's comes out a little bit more externally. Mm. All right. Yep. Well, now that we've solved that mystery, and, and yeah. uh, again, uh, I'm not diagnosing. No, I know, him. I know, and I didn't mean for this to turn into di- let's diagnose Jeremy, but you know, here we yep. are. Um, so, what do thanks we do for, about it? Thanks for being. Thank you, though. Because I think your listeners are really going to appreciate this kind of discussion to help so. them think through this. I hope so. So let's help them and let's help me. How do we, uh, I'm trying to make friends with it. We're, we're working on it. You know, we get together and yeah. talk every now and then, but other than sort of that befriending and trying to bring it into my life, what can I do to, to turn things around and, and put a leash on Zach's Tasmanian devil? Yep. Hmm. There's three things. Okay. One, really start to learn about it. And yeah, I wrote a book, but my my book isn't the only book out there. So go find a good solid resource. By the way, TikTok is not the sol- most solid resource. <laughs> I had like okay. three TikTok analogies I was going to bring, like of people demonstrating this is what it's like to have ADHD. Yeah. And every one of them I'm like, oh, that means I have it. No, stop listening to TikTok. Yeah, I well, I, I appreciate <laughs> By the way, the reason TikTok is doing so well with ADHD, and by the way, I'm deep into ADHD TikTok, but the reason it was doing so well is because the medical world let us all down for a while. Mm-hmm. In other words, the DSM hasn't been updated. It's woefully behind. And so all these people are starting to take it back going, no, 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 I have this. And they want to be listened to. So I do respect TikTokers saying, and there's some very good, solid ADHD TikTokers out there. Mm. So I'm not swiping at all of them. There are some good ones out there. Okay. In fact, good to know. there are some that will make me laugh so hard. I will cry because I'm like, whoa, that happened to me today. And wow. yeah. Um, so educate yourself is the first thing. It's a neurological difference. 
all of us with ADHD, the reason I titled my book, Your Brain's Not Broken, is most of us feel broken. Mm -hmm. The truth is, it's a neurological difference. And the truth is, we're not really well adapted for modern life. That's the truth. So one, educate. Two, uh, really start to work on the emotional regulation. You're going to be dead in the water if you're listening to anxiety, fear, any of the emotions. If you're motivating yourself in that way, you're going to be dead in the water. So I am going to suggest you get help at that point. Yeah. Um, emotional regulation doesn't mean you're blowing up, up at your wife. Emotional regulation actually means you're not letting emotions dictate your behavior. So that's the second thing. And then the third thing is learn some good strategies. People tend to start with the strategies and I try to tell them not to, because until you learn the emotional regulation, it's not going to make sense. Mm. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And, and suddenly my life makes a lot of sense. So uh, I, <laughs> right, well, I, I have some homework to do now. Thanks a lot. Uh, all right. We're going to we're going to wrap it up there. But before we let you go, where can we find out more about you? Where can we get the book and all the things we need to know to catch up with you? Uh, well, my book's called Your Brain's Not Broken. And I run the ADHD Center. So our web address is www.miadhd.com. Did I pause because I almost forgot my own website? Well, yeah. Um, so maybe you can edit it. Maybe you won't. Whatever. Um, I, and although I'm not taking new clients, I have such a wonderful staff. They are really, I, I'm so proud of this team uh, that we have at the center. So they're good, good people. Um, if you don't want to go there, I would suggest ADHD coaching is a great option. Look for an ADHD coach. You know, it doesn't have to be one of my coaches. Um, there's coaches all around the world. So you can go to ADHDcoaches.org to find an ADHD coach near you. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much for your time, your wisdom, and uh, for helping me clear up a lot of questions I have about myself. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are awesome. Our thanks to Dr. Tamara Rozier, author of Your Brain's Not Broken, Strategies for Navigating Your Emotions and Life with ADHD. You can find links to her and her work in the show notes for this episode at thefitmess.com. What were we talking about? Oh, right. Key takeaways. <laughs> right. Well, the one thing that actually made me feel a little bit better, because I always thought that I was I was an idiot or dumb because of my inability to focus and get things done. And that's not the case, right? It's not a dumb boy's disease. Like this is a human being thing that can happen to any of us, whether you are lower intelligence, higher intelligence, middle intelligence, whatever it is, it can, can afflict any of us. Right. It's a neurological difference. It's a cognitive difference in your brain that just makes things function a little differently. The thing that stood out to me the most was when, well, first when she didn't diagnose me, but you know, wink, wink, nod, nod. It really, it really hit home for me when she talked about how people that, that live with this are driven by emotional motivation. And, you know, I just keep coming back to things like the gym, things that I don't like to do. Most of us don't like doing that stuff. We don't like doing the things that we don't want to do. But when I am emotionally driven to do something, I can react so much faster. I can be inspired to take action on the things when there's emotion behind it. But when it's just the logical, I know I need to do this, it's better for me, that's often not enough. And I really have to talk myself into taking action, like going to the gym, like eating better, whatever all the things are that we talk about all the time. I have to find the emotional connection to really motivate me to move forward on those things. And so it's just, it's really interesting to me that that is a component of this that people live with. And so I'm, I'm very curious to, to actually get diagnosed and, and see if this is something that I am in fact living with, because I feel like there might be tools and resources that might be helpful for me to manage this even better. And it's kind of funny how heightened anxiety goes along with ADHD. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't describe me to a T or anything right. at all, but I don't think I would have really put it together. On my own, I would have considered anxiety and ADHD to be two completely separate, independent things. But if I could learn to befriend my ADHD the way I've befriended my anxiety, maybe I can manage it a little bit better. You can, you can have a whole party. It'll be a great time. You guys all just hang out, kick it. It'll be good. Yeah, wait till I'll invite PTSD as well. Oh, and yeah. There's going to be a lot of fun. And when I say fun, I mean the FUN in the middle of dysfunctional. Yeah, exactly, exactly.
All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of The Fit Mess. We do have a bonus clip for you from this interview. You can get that by subscribing to our newsletter. And the link to do that is on our website at thefitmess.com. That is also where we will be back in just a few days with a brand new episode. Thank you for listening. See you, everyone. We know this podcast is amazing and doesn't seem to lack anything, but we need a legal disclaimer. Prior to implementing anything discussed in this podcast, it is your responsibility to conduct your own research and consult your physician. You should assume that Jeremy and Zach don't know what they're talking about, and they're not liable for any physical or emotional issues that occur directly or indirectly from listening to this podcast.